no, we can't be live. What's going on? What? Are they not here yet? Guys, Sam and Travis aren't here. We can't be live. We... Guys. Yeah, uh, I haven't even not, you know what? Well, know. let's go. Let's just get drinks. They'll, they'll start it. They'll start it when everyone gets here. Okay. I don't, this I'm is, usually the late that, one. Will we do that? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Are we allowed to do that? Weird, All right. Well, we're doing we'll it do now. It. All right. <sighs> Look at us. We're here. We're we're somewhere. We we got sucked through a magical portal when when we heard the word drinks. Drinks? Like like ale? I think so. We're at a bar. Check around. Do you see anything? Uh, uh, wait a minute. I know all of the taverns in Amon Taldore, and this one is totally new. What the fuck? It's true. I haven't performed here before, but look over there. There's some sort of fey, uh, fey screen, fey box where people are are talking to us. They're saying things like "What the fuck?" and "Bruh, is this real?" and "V tubing." I don't know what these words mean. I, I don't either. It's like a window, but it's got like a bunch of letters. I, I don't know letters. Well, it's I okay. Don't know letters. I'll read. What the, I know? It's okay, Grog. Calm down. We're cool. All right. Um, I'll read some of the comments that people are making and we can absolutely live reply to them. Okay. Um, some people are saying bidet. I don't even know what that means. Yeah. Others are saying, uh, I would like to, wait, that's your thing. <laughs> that's what I do. I'm rage. I'm rage. I saw something about beads of, and then like this symbol that was like this. I don't know what that is, but we should really take some questions from these fine folks while we're here. Okay. And while I can't seem to find any booze down here, huh? All right, well, uh, one person just said the cube, which I, I think is uh, calling me out for my gigantic in proportion to it, my it, body. It's like, it's like massive. It, it, well, I mean, come on, give me a little bit more credit. It's massive! <laughs> I, I mean, I, it's amazing, like, I just wish they, uh, should we tell them to actually ask questions? Well, we did, and so far the questions have been, what the fuck? Uh, why God, why? Why are they in the studio? Uh, how how are the they studio? here? Um, okay, how tall are each of you? That come that comes from uh, from this fey, fey box. Yeah, you come up to like my, my kneecap, right? Yeah, I'm like a knee high, and, yep. and how tall are you? I've, I'm like a, a lot of heads higher. Like, I think I'm like that many feet high. Uh, how many do you think that is? That's four. <laughs> yep, <Right>? correct. <laughs> Uh, can Scanlan stand, was one of the questions uh, from the Favox. Here we go, get ready for the big height change. I'm standing. <laughs> good job! And now I'm sitting. That Woo, was great, that was tough. man! Woo. We're doing good. Uh, Let's keep it warm, man, what else? Okay, there's another question, Grog, I'll read this one. It says, what is your favorite color? These are really hard hitting questions. I'm doing We're using some pretty amazing magic technology and you're asking us, what's your favorite color? Go ahead, Grog. Red, because it's the color of the sky. Oh, mine's purple, because come on, check me out. Yeah, ladies. Is that really purple? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> What's your drink of choice? I think I know the answer for you, buddy. Yes, yeah, spaghetti. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, uh, I mean, I guess you could drink spaghetti if you. If you just. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna we're going with it. Into the gullet. Um, my uh, my drink of choice, I would say, is. Uh, uh, boy, that's a really tough one. I'd, I'd say like a fine glass of uh, of cognac after a, after a love making session. Is that one of those great drinks? Oh, it's great. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, questions. Can you blow me a kiss? Yeah. That's uh, That will prove that we are do really- Do it on the count of three? Yep. Okay, one, one two, two, three. Mwah. Oh, it actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Get paid for this. this is amazing. <laughs> okay, next question. How did it feel to be a Triceratops, Grog? I think that one's for you. Oh, for me? Well. <laughs> It's hard getting into the mind of a Triceratops. <laughs> what is a horn, and how is it used? Man, that was super deep. Thanks. <laughs> also, I, I, when I was a Triceratops, I took the biggest deuce ever. It was, it was really painful. Really? Yeah. Like one big pile of shit. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you know what we should play? What? Boulder Parchment Shears. Okay, let's try this <laughs> and hope that it works. Ready? <laughs> Boulder, Boulder Parchment, parchment Shears. shears. Oh, what are you fucking okay, throwing? Okay. Okay, go. Boulder <laughs> Parchment Shears. Older bunch of cheers. Yeah! Oh, oh I, I win. God I win. damn it. Um, okay, this one's for you, Grog. It says, I know you can't read this, but it okay. says, what 
is the meaning of life. Um, I think to love and be loved by others. Oh man, I'm, I'm genuinely tearing up over here. Are you? <laughs> that was really beautiful, well, buddy. Thanks, man. Oh. Mike would be really proud. Just bump it out for that one. <laughs> oh, no. no, you're close. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did it! <laughs> Good job, pal. Oh, oh, God. Easy easy there, pal. All right, what is your favorite member of, I'm assuming they're going to say Vox Machina. What is your, who's your favorite member of Vox Machina? I, I, I mean. I mean. I mean, it's. I mean, for it, both of us, it's I, Pike. It's Pike. Oh, it's, I, I was going to say you, and you were going to say me. Oh, oh, I didn't pick that up with your body language. No, I mean, I was doing this gesture. This is like the international gesture for like <laughs> you're you and right. me. I'm together. just joshing with I'm you, right, pal. Right. Of course you're my fave. <sighs> um, all right, another question from, yes. from the fave box. Um, what is your morning beauty routine? Oh, this is very important. I get a big barrel of ice and I shove my whole face in it and then I, I, I take it and I swish it around and then I spit and then I go out and I slap a horse. <laughs> Just any horse will do? Yeah, I haven't really figured out what that does in terms of benefits, but. Well, you know, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't, right? I mean, it hurts the horse. It does hurt. But, yeah. Hurt the horse. Someone asked us to dab. I don't know what that is, but we can try. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, hey, hey. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, this is amazing. It is, isn't it? Well, I mean, this is some great magic. I feel. I feel loose, Ooh. I feel happy, oh. I, feel, oh. I feel happy, I feel happy. Uh, we could do this all night. I, I, I feel though that there's something else waiting for us, but you know what, fuck them, we're gonna keep going. This is fun. Uh, this is <laughs> Scanlon, if you were in a band, what would you call it? Oh, great Boy. question. Uh, uh, Prince? I don't know, what's a, what's a good band name? I'll tell you what's not a good band name, Vox Machina. It doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, it's kind of like a play on words, right? You know what I mean? It's yeah. like a little a little twisted. It's weird. Somebody said, do uh, you spice? How do you know? Uh, you can't read. <laughs> uh, all right, it says, Grog, do you shave your head or are you naturally bald? Naturally gifted. I mean, these are gifts bestowed by the gods. Wow, that's true. That's yeah. true. It is a very godly shape to your head. It's gorgeous. Here, I'll give you a pat on the head. Nope, can't reach it. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, I did it. it. Okay. <laughs> that was good stuff. Um, <laughs> Vox Machina, fuck, Mary kill. Uh, maybe we can skip that one. Smash. Um, <laughs> anyway, Grog, you know what? I'm feeling the tug of a magical tether. Oh, really? It's pulling, you remember Allura Vysorum, we were talking to her and oh, Kima yeah. when, when, we were, when we were sort of portaled oh, oh, here. Lady and I feel like maybe her magic is wearing off and I feel the tether pulling well, us don't, back. I don't wanna go, I'm having so much fun. I'm having so much fun too, but you know what? This tavern doesn't have any ale, so. That's true. Maybe we can find- At least we can kick ass with Kima when we get back, right? That's right. Ah! Uh, all right, uh, on the count of three, yeah. uh, we'll count it off with our hands. Okay. <laughs> One, One, two, two three. three! Yeah! Whoa! <laughs> oh, that was. They're still not back. <clears throat> what are we gonna do if they don't show up? I don't know. I mean, uh -huh. we can still have our show. Yeah, got our Did drinks. They just cut them in later. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, yeah, I think we have fix to tackle it. that. Like mocap or something. Mocap them straight in. Should be fine. <laughs> yeah, should be good. Guys, I think. Does this smell weird? Like. <laughs> like cum and protein powder or something? Those two are the same thing. That's true. Mm. Mm, familiar. <laughs> Hi. Just add water. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our fourth and final Legend of Vox Walk in a Watch Party. <laughs> Make your own. How to make your own sea monkeys. Wow. First. GOS guys. Oh, GOS. Like, these man, we're about to get banned. Where's the castle? We are so about to get banned. Let's, uh, <laughs> counting the seconds. Mm. Hi, everybody. I'm Mika Burton, and tonight we will be watching episodes 10 through 12 of The Legend of Vox Machina. Uh, we have some very special people here on the couch. 
Oh, well, look who it is. Ooh. Hey, guys, sorry we're late. Yeah, yeah. what's with we the were... weird matching outfits? Uh, yeah. We were on a uh, speed skating team yep. practice. <laughs> ah. Short, short track. Okay. We were wow. just, just in case the Olympic team was like out, we had to <laughs> yeah. hop in there. Yeah. No, I've seen, I've seen the, the guy who's penis froze recently. That's rough. <laughs> That's yeah. rough. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, did somebody's penis I'll, freeze? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, yeah. That's an actual yeah. news. Anyway. Anyway. Like anyway. Yeah. Speaking of curling. <laughs> Speaking of curling, we have Towson. We have Towson. Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Talison Jaffe. I am uh, happy to be here. And I'm the voice of Percival DeRolo. And uh, you are in for uh, three episodes of massive screaming that really disturbed my neighbors over the last couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so true. And speaking of penises freezing off, we have Matthew Mercer. Yay! Yay! That is actually on my business card. It's the yeah. weirdest thing. Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Matthew Mercer. I voice Silas Briarwood, as well as uh, a unique entity that shows up towards the end of this episode run. <laughs> so. Ooh, spooky. And. In Speed Skater number one, we have Sam Regal. Yes! yes. Thank you. I'm yes. Sam Regal. I'm the voice of Scanlon Shorthalt, who I feel like. I feel like I saw him just running around here like a little leprechaun uh, really? earlier. Really? Uh, I don't know. How is that possible? I don't know. But it's great to be here again. Mika. And, and captain of our speed skating. That's right. Yes, captain. Skating. And, you are so fun. And we have co-captain of the speed skating team, Travis Willingham here. Hey! 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 I'm Travis Willingham. I play a uh, Grog Strongjaw in uh, The Legend of Vox Machina and co-captain on the speed, speed, speed skating team. Speed skating. The <laughs> team skating. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Right yeah. Really good for you. Speed skaters. Speed skaters. Through the wall. <laughs> good God. Are we actually live? Is this oh, happening we, right now? We are. are we and this lives on the internet <laughs> forever. Oh, sweet <laughs> baby Jesus. Uh, and we also have our special, very special guest, Gray Griffin here. Yay! 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 We yes. have, she is the voice of Delilah Briarwood, the voice of probably all of our childhoods. <laughs> um, okay, now I'm fangirling, so oh, tell us about yourself. Tell us about yourself. Well, I, I voice Delilah Briarwood, and, um, and I'm here with my darling and my. Oh, cool. Anyway. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were dead. Anyway. Um, <laughs> You're never wrong. <laughs> soon enough, soon enough. <laughs> I'm just so happy to be here because I'm, I'm a fan too. I'm a fan of you guys. And so, anyway, I have two fan girls in a room together. What could happen? <laughs> <laughs> so, without further ado, these vibes are super great tonight. Let's yeah. jump into episode 10 of The Legends of Vox Machina Woo. Depths of Deceit. Yeah. Do it. Now, and we go home. it's Q&A time. I'm sorry, the, these nerds were nerding. I was letting them do their nerding. Nerding. They were nerding really like hard. You nerd. just put them together deep, and they just deep, have yep. their own little language. They're like Furbies. I'm sorry Furbies. you put you in between. Oh my <laughs> god. Can we nerds. make Furbies Talison off, and random. Matt Furbies? <laughs> <laughs> oh, could you imagine like a little That's Furby with like little right? blue it's hair like, and a little Furby with like a little vest on and like a little like a little leather cuff on it? It'd be like a Matt Talison Furby. And then they like screech in the middle of the night. And probably make out. I mean, probably. I was I was going like in a whole nother happen. direction with like nervies because I was amused by like an off-brand Furby. <laughs> it just won't make eye contact with you unless you're not looking at it. And then it <laughs> We've gone really <laughs> off script. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey everybody. Hey, hey everybody. Hey everybody. <laughs> yeah, what script? I almost threw this iPad and then I realized I shouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, so let's do some Q and A, shall we? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Obviously, the first question will be for Gray, as oh, you are our okay. special guest. Mm -hmm. uh, you play Lady Delilah Briarwood, a character yes. we've been loving and fearing all season. You, you are now everywhere <laughs> in the world of voiceover. Princess Azula from Avatar, Monster Girl, and Shrieking Ray from Invincible, just to name a few Aww. credits. Let's just put Azula up there. Just oh, oh just... well, thank you very much. It's oh like Delilah's God. like. Azula all grown up and you know down in her other register. Actually you almost answered my question already. As a voice actor, what goes into crafting this villain that everybody both hates and loves and wants to marry? That's the <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's just you have me. to be a little you be hot you have to be a little hot. Um, <laughs> yeah, but um, I yeah, I just always try to have that sympathetic quality to cuz you know you can if they're all just, if they're just all evil then there's nothing fun about it but if there's a way where some part of you you get in touch with your in, your inner villain where you're like 
hmm, I can see why she did it for love, you know, or, or you know, Azula, it's like she had family problems, you know, just, there always has to be that sliver of like, well, I can see a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, it makes sense, I get it. You gotta like, relate. Yeah, you gotta relate. Yes. Did you watch any of Campaign One to, Get a feel for Delilah. No, because I I I, I am I have such a low self esteem that that if I get somebody, I'm like I'm terrible. I'm never going to be as good as that person. Well, you know I did, I can't. If, if I can if I can if that was myself. You, were, you definitely should have watched campaign. Right? You would be like, oh, I got this. No, I just, that guy. any role I've ever done or taken over or anything, I'm just I never ever watch anything. Even sometimes at the end, because then I'll just beat myself up for the rest of my life, going, see you. you know, they should have just kept that other person. Anyway, but. I can see that. Yeah, the yeah, comparison could be crazy sometimes. Oh yeah. 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 Also, I hate the sound of my own voice, so I oh, never watch well, the sound of your we voice. We do. Well, and to that point, like, you know, there are some roles and some characters that were very specific and precious to where we wanted to to at least give that sort of perspective to some of the performers that were coming in to see where it came from mm -hmm. and to, to carry that energy over. Uh, Delilah, we always kind of had you in mind for it, so it wasn't even a worry. We were like, just, oh. do, just do your thing, it's gonna be great. I, yeah. Oh, I was just so <laughs> glad to be, I was just so glad. Because we were allowed to say that I was originally Scratch. If you um, can we say? You well, I was originally, well, sorry. Like <laughs> I don't know who the other person that was playing, but I was originally Scratch, and I was like, gosh, this is some of the best acting I've ever done, and no one's ever gonna hear it. <laughs> so I was really like, sad. But then when Sam one day was like, you know, I think we're gonna go with you, I was like, ah! I actually, I wept, I wept. Anyway, I was very, was very happy, very so. Aww. So I'm very, very honored. Can consider our, our choice of you for Scratch was kind of our subtle way of being like, we really want her. Yes. Right, of course, of course <laughs> it we're just gonna force her in there and show you the scratch. Like, this Even really good. bad scratch sticks this. in your head sometimes. You know, like I've seen people go like, I kind of like the scratch. It's like it was really bad, but I, it did really kind of get in there, didn't it? <laughs> well, speaking of the process of casting and creating Delilah, we have some art of Delilah. Oh yes, concept art to look over. So I kind of want to know, since you know Delilah is your character, what was the process behind it? What were you thinking? What's going on in your mind? Ooh. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's just an amazing cosplay of her mm. recently. I've oh seen. yeah, Ooh, people have just knocked out of the park. Wanted to have that kind of like dark debutante feel. Somebody mm. who who comes definitely from an elevated social position, um, but has lost it and is trying to reclaim it through their presentation, mm. through the way that they kind of lord over those that are around or from their eyes below them, um, and definitely kind of almost a Tim Burton esque flair to her. Uh, Aesthetic and design, and Phil Brasso just gave the initial takes on that. We were like, "Yeah, you're, you're there. We'll, just, we'll tweak a few things here and there as we go." And uh, I love it. It's great. Yeah, for that one, I think I think the main thing is they just simplified her. I don't know what is this called? This Black mantle? I don't, yeah, whatever. It was spider webby before, but oh. they took out some of the lines. Yeah. yeah. And we also put a couple extra beads on her. And, mm -hmm. and then yeah. the choker piece. Yeah, a lot of it was just economy and finding it, but we, it was so nice too because she has that prim posture, and all she has to do is lower her eyes and look out from under those brows, and she's yeah. got you. It's just the best. The, the, art, the brow art so is good. good. Whoever's yeah. doing her brows yeah. is like. <laughs> <laughs> you think she has like an esthetician just in white stuff? There's definitely some threading going yeah. on. Remember the yeah. steward? Remember the steward? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. Like, higher, higher. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Was, that's why they were very angry to lose Vedmeyer because he's really good when he gets oh, up yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. Everything was yeah. yeah. We just went right here. <laughs> It would have been phenomenal if in subsequent episodes her eyebrows just got bushier and bushier and bushier. Right, right. <laughs> it's hard to find good people these days. <laughs> Speaking of good people, in this episode, we well, not really good people, we got to meet Anna Ripley. Um, and she may be on Percy's list, but she ended up helping the Vox Machina in this episode. Question for everyone. What the fuck is up with Dr. Ripley? Why are her intentions so hard to pin down? What's, What's going on? What the fuck is up with that? She makes lots of enemies. She's made an enemy in Percy for sure and, and his family. But now she's made an enemy out of the Briarwoods too. She nobody likes <laughs> yeah, like herself. The, the yeah. opposite yeah. of everyone loves Raymond. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody hates Ripley. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the one line. <laughs> that's the one line. <laughs> yeah. That was the direction we gave her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Phenomenal. No, it's just everybody. Everybody uh, hates her, and so she she's got to, uh, the enemy of her enemy is also her enemy. <laughs> That's a tough place to be. No, yeah. it's, it's 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 the Loki dilemma of just like trying to be like I'm. You know, I'm fine. I know everybody hates me, and there's terrible things I've done, but I'm fine. I'm fine. Ha <laughs> ha! No, I'm not. You're fucked. You know, it's 
She's just trying. She's knowing. She's waiting for her moment. She knows not to. She doesn't show her hand until it's too late. I thought you said Loki, like Loki. Loki, no, not, uh, not like, like oh, low like key. the Loki dilemma. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it is. You just did the reverse American Gods reveal. That was wow. awesome. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's great because she's always. She always seems like she's trying to play the game, and then she plays it too long until she becomes part of one of the pieces that's being. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's, that's a, yeah. very much a lot of that art. <laughs> that's that's all. Let's get some bongo drums in here, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> I have a question for Talison, but before oh, no. we get to it, we have a little uh, animatic oh, that yes. we'd like to show off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's get to that, shall we? This is residuum. The pipes must carry acid for its chemical refinement process. Looks like they're making a lot of it. Why so much? This was Anders' domain. I only helped them with the ziggurat. Oh, what the heck is this for? Your sister to quit taking the piss before I forget my manners. Cass! What are you doing? Excellent work, dear. <laughs> right. Oh, it's so good. That was really great. So, Talison. Yes. Cassandra's betrayal of Boxman. I don't mean to upset you here. Uh, it's a memorable moment from the stream, so what was going through your mind when it happened on stream, and did that inform how it was presented in the series? I mean, I'll say that everything that happened on stream informed the things that happened in the series. I, I was very loosey-goosey when I originally gave the one-page description of what had happened uh, in, uh, in the Percy's origin to, to Matt. I made it very, very clear that none of it, that it was all unreliable narrator, I very specifically didn't add anything that he wouldn't have known. Like, it was just the facts as he knew them, um, including the fact that I had no idea that the gun was going to do that. Like, that was not, I was not prepared for that. Nice. That was, there was even a, a realm where I gave you an out for saying there was no demon. That there was just, like, that was yeah. entirely you, just you, him. It could have been nothing. You legitimately said, I think, in the original, like, backstory for Percy, it was like, had a family in Whitestone, the Briarwood showed up and killed everybody. I managed to barely escape. And then this kind of shadow entity came into my dreams and inspired me to make the first gun. Yeah, it was, it was just was, a dream. I had a it, weird dream. Just a weird dream. Yeah. And so, Could have been anything. And, and, and that was it. And, it, and so for, yeah, I just got to have fun building yeah, up it, this narrative to fuck with you. And you made it so much dark. darker than I was ever expecting, which is impressive because I'm a, I'm a dark human Well, to being. be fair. To be fair. Yeah. To be fair. Oh. Uh, <laughs> When you when you meet me on the dark level and then go darker, then I have to go darker. Yeah, you have to go darker. And like good friends for a long time, it's just kind of like a a, 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 a dark pissing contest. Yeah. I don't, that's weird. No, 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 no. I, I, I regret everything. Yeah. Uh, Drink more water. Give your titties a fucking break, man. What the hell? I suppose the point I was trying to make there. Uh, I'm so sorry. Was I was in so like like several things you did in this game. I was in total shock and I was not expecting it at all. So a lot of a lot of it was just me watching, going, I don't know how to react to this. I was there. That shock was just, I I, I don't know how I feel. I don't know how Percy feels. Everything is everything is madness right now. This uh this makes no sense. Yay! Yeah, no, it was great. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, it was a it was a wonderful emotional seesaw. Thank you for that. Delightful. Yeah. What I do? If, if if you don't have enough trauma in your real life, let me put it in your fake life. No. Yeah. Just, <laughs> Aw, Matt, please. that's so sweet. Oh, God. God. Tor torture my whiny little one percent. Immersion therapy. Please. That's yeah. what friends and RPGs are for, guys. <laughs> I mean, haven't we all cried at an RPG table before? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, RPGs. No I love you so much. Awesome. Speaking of which, Matt, an Hi. acid trap is a classic RPG trope. Yes. You like that? Did you like that segue I just did? Yeah, that was yeah. good. That was good. Um, like, <laughs> pretty good. Uh, even Pike points it out in the show. So <laughs> was that an accurate representation of what you envisioned that scene to look like, or did it get bigger? 
smaller, more ridiculous. The, the space was uh, originally, in my mind at least, it was a little smaller, more compact, mm -hmm. and it was definitely kind of like this is my chance to do kind of a Bond villain, hey. you know, Ooh. a trap type of circumstance. Yeah, even, even there, like even the original scope, I was like, oh, it looks about right, and then they, you see the little shadows there. I was like, that's really big. But then I talked to the art team, and they showed that the whole space was sloped and kind of like the upward angle where there there were controlled levels of danger that they could, you know, unveil with it. And then even the initial note of like, uh, you know, well, with that continuous flow, it wouldn't fill up too quickly. And then with the fix of like the keyleth vines causing it to all of a sudden begin to fill faster, mm -hmm. like there was a lot of really cool kind of just collaborative discussions with the design team about how we can make this look amazing, how it could work, and ratcheting up the stakes for it. And they just did an amazing job. And, and I, I, yeah, I was just like, this is incredible. I had a stupid idea to make my friends scared of acid for a scene, and you made it really fun, so. <laughs> yeah, in the, in the original campaign, I think, I, was it walls that dropped down? Like yeah, it was two walls, walls on each end that dropped down. It was just like a kind of more condensed chamber, like a box, a yeah. boxy sort of thing. More or less. Yeah. yeah. We got into animation. We realized like there's so many characters, and that's just not enough space for them we to did. like we, move we, around. We mocked it up, and then they were like they were trapped, and there was nowhere to go. Like there was no nothing to animate. They were yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we made it. Arthur uh, Loftus made it much bigger, and and it it worked. It looked great. Yeah. It yeah. Was I love it. It was beautiful too. I mean, for a near death scene, it was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but for all the GMs and aspiring DMs out there, what goes into making a really good trap? Like, what do you have to think about beforehand? Do you have to think about the possible solutions? Uh, well, I will say most challenges and encounters, I don't like to think of a necessarily specific solution. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to let the players come up with creative solutions to problems I present. Ooh. So it's like, you know, you build the problem, you build the challenge, and then see what the players come up with and see how they can adapt their creative decision making towards this circumstance. Um, that also depends on campaign to campaign. If you have players that are very puzzle oriented, that love, you know, the, the, uh, solving a very specific issue, mm -hmm. then it can behoove you to go ahead and plan a specific thing that you can give hints to and let them kind of eventually find it. And that, you just kind of feel that out with game group to game group. Some game groups are like, I don't want to deal with puzzles. I just want to, if there's a problem, I'll push a button or I'll fight something. You're like, maybe I shouldn't give you something that's 17 different layers of a challenge because then <laughs> we'll hate each other by the end of the night. Um, so a lot of it is just gauging your game group, see what they interact with, what they're excited to interact with, what kind of drives drives them to get excited and work together to solve an issue, and then kind of, you know, tailor your challenges to that. Um, and so for this instance, uh, because it was a very fast threat, a very fast growing threat, you didn't want to make it too complicated because the players would get frustrated, uh, especially if it grew too quickly for them to be destroyed before they had the opportunity to feel clever. And that's kind of the point of traps. The traps aren't there to be like, oh, I got you, players! It's to, <laughs> it's to help them hopefully succeed and then feel very clever, you know, that they were able to, you know, get past this challenge you presented for them. Mm -hmm. It's like if parenting. You... Mm. Yes, very much so. <laughs> Jamming, traps is like parenting. <laughs> The best way to parent your child is to put them in a vat of acid. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. I did not say that. That's not on my No, but I did. Yeah. You can prove that to me. Mika Burton, you want to parent your kids? Put them in acid. Oh, oh. Achilles came out okay. That's all. Achilles came out okay. just fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dip them, dip them like, in the fire. Are you on dip acid? <laughs> <laughs> Don't lie to me. Sorry. <laughs> I learned from watching you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. What is happening tonight? Oh, it's the finale! <laughs> it's Yay! the finale! You're right, you're right. We got finale energy. We do have finale, finale energy. Speaking of finale Another energy, portal. so Travis Grog was naked. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, Grog drove naked into a vat of acid. Yep. And again, we heard more of these amazing Grog Fury lines as he swims through acid. Uh huh. How how did you do all of that without blowing out your voice? <laughs> How did you do that? How did you do oh, that? Wow. It's pretty, I think I, I, I learned it from Fred Tattashore in an oh. Avengers <laughs> session. He was underwater once and you you like scream and then you do the old like <laughs> thing. You're like <laughs> <laughs> And you just do that over and over. Mm -hmm. um, luckily underwater it's not like a full rage craziness, but <laughs> I did try and go as low and as high as like <laughs> <laughs> just absolute shit part house sound. Part, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, just go, just go bananas. That's like the most Fred Tattashore thing I've heard. That's amazing. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Freddie or, or Roger Craig Smith. They always do yeah. things. Where like, yep, yeah. deals. Yep, deals. Yep. So, like they'll reverse their voices in the middle of the session. Like, what? Yeah, just grab a bucket full of helium. You're fine. Yeah. Just try it out. Yeah. Like, oh. any, 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 the fact that anybody gets any VO session done with Roger Craig Smith present is a. Is a is a true he accomplishment. He helped me set up my entire home system with all right? this stuff. Aww. I That's called him up. I was so like, "What are you doing? How do you do?" And he was like.
like, Boy. you need to get this mic, you need to get a Scarlett Fish mic. I was, and of course, I ordered the last one available because everyone was making a mad dash for like home recording equipment. Anyway, but. Hey, you guys remember group Lever. recording sessions? I no. know. <sighs> One day. One day. I've One been day. in my robe be for so long. In your robe? <laughs> I was so happy to put on some kind but of outfit. But it was so good. You would always record, and sometimes the robe, like the shoulders would be up, and then the hood would come up for <laughs> some of them. We were like, she's in it! She is in it! <laughs> First group session back, all Kigurumis. That oh, was so good. I mean, we're done. I mean, set I, the mood lighting? I was like 50 50 if I showed up in my pajama pants to a session before the pandemic. Afterward, yeah, it's true. pajamas all day. Well, I wear like vintage 1930s dressing oh, gowns, God. so people either think I'm overdressed or underdressed. One time I went to Target and people were like, Where are you going? And I'm like, Oh, I was worried because I was worried this is a role, but they're like, Oh, it looks like an amazing wrap dress. Oh, You're getting anyway. some real Briarwood vibes yeah. there. Like, Oh my yeah. gosh, Good I stuff. love it. Yeah, it's all about the marabou, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Mine has a bit of blood spatter on it. But. Oh my god! <laughs> I just can see the flow running through Target. Right? Oh, the <laughs> like, the feathers just drenched it? in blood, like <laughs> scraping along the floor. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> uh, speaking of Delilah, without spoiling too much, um, did you get any of Delilah's backstory before you started recording? Did Matt share anything special with you? Do you know secrets about Campaign One that even critters may not know about? They don't tell me anything don't because say, I don't you say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no, the no, collar no. on that yeah. <laughs> Travis has uh, pushed the button. Freak anyway, I, <laughs> <laughs> I have the biggest mouth in Central and North America. <laughs> so Specifically Central, Central and North. And, North. Okay. Um, and people don't tell me things because I will tell people about them. Like I just yeah. did about the thing where I was like, Does they, is it okay to say that I was yeah. originally okay, scratched? Live. Live. That. Whatever. It's totally fine. Um, so they did not give me very much backstory in the beginning because I was I was supposed to be a temporary addition, but then, um, uh, yeah, well, you yeah. Were, that was our way of pushing you forward. Well, it was very smart of them not to give me, you don't want to give me too much information. Well, I will use it again. It happens in the biz a lot, like you come in for scratch and then you end up with the role because they just, that, they hear it. So it's that's, not just something that happens in the business a lot. I assume, like, it's not the first time Gray Griffin has gotten. Almost. I, I, so many scratch jobs. I, I, people yeah. always go, I don't do scratch. I'm like, well, then you're dumb. Yeah. Because I was like, it pays the same as regular yeah. work. And oftentimes, you know, you'll get something or they'll go, well, you know, we can't use you as the lead, but we're going to give you the, yeah. the, yeah. the mushrooms voice or whatever. I don't know. I'm doing really the mushrooms up. tonight. I did, I, did, um, I did scratch on a Tinkerbell movie for like young Captain Hook. And they're like, you're scratching this, but we're going to be replacing you with, um, oh, I can't remember his name suddenly. The guy, the guy who plays Chris. Loki. Uh, no. Tom Hiddleston? Tom Hiddleston, thank you. Oh. Uh, yeah. and, and then they couldn't tell the difference between our performances, so they ended up leaving one of my lines in the actual movie. Wow. So they had to go back and pay me all the money for the trailer, and I was like, oh, all right. So sometimes it works out okay. Oh, <laughs> I did, for a Tinkerbell movie, I did this, like, uh, the narration, and then they, they said, no, we want to actually go with someone Irish, and I was like, gosh darn it. So I changed my name to, like, Kelly Riley or something. <laughs> They don't want, and my agent was like, I'll allow it. Um, no, I, you did. I, 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 because I was like, they don't want a real Irish person because they're not going to be able to understand what that person's saying. So I'm just going to give a little Irish spring lilt to it. Somewhere <laughs> Liam O'Brien's left eye is twitching yeah, they real hard. They don't want lucky charms. They don't want the real Irish person. So yeah, I did. I, I read it, you know, and then and then I came and I was like, yeah, that, that it was, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did get it again. I got it again. <laughs> Liam, um, Liam, we're so sorry. She loves the Irish. This, we love the sorry, Irish, this Liam. This has just gone so off the rails. It's perfect. <laughs> So anyway, let's jump into episode 11 of The Legend of Fox Machina, Whispers at the Ziggurat. Let's hit play. I really wonder how people who watched the first episode knowing nothing about this campaign, going, oh, it's dick jokes and drinking and vomiting, and now they're watching this episode, and they're like, what the fuck? That was the goal. What the fuck? That was the goal. Dick jokes and the farting and the boobs to like soften you up before we're like, all right, now here the real fun begins. Here's the trauma. Trauma, 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 trauma. Welcome to Critical Role, everybody. That's on a timeshare. The dicks and the boobs are just like that free microwave. Yeah, that's true. Microwave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is they giving out microwave? 
microwave oh, golf clubs, titties. You know. I've never been scammed by a timeshare before. Yeah. 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 I mean, the most I got was like free soup once, but like microwave, I gotta go to your timeshare scam. I got appliances. Uh, my parents scammed the Palatable. time places, actually. <laughs> they would. They would sit there for the whole two that, hours for well, that. My, my parents didn't make money for a long time, and so they, they made money by going to timeshare meetings to eat the food, because that's how they could oh, live. Smart. Until eventually they began to recognize them, and they couldn't do them anymore. That's why I used to do those, like, <laughs> c- consumer <laughs> things, where it's like, you know, and then they're like, were you here, Ethel? And I was like, hey, <laughs> yeah. let me just grab a few my more breakfast bars, yeah. and I'll yeah. be on my way. <laughs> Can't you see my mustache? I have not been here. <laughs> I say we let her go. <laughs> Oh man! Before we all get put on some sort of watch list, sure. Um, Before we're a little more watch list. There you go, Um, Matt. I know you and Talison were talking about this earlier, but are there a few little hints of lore, some pieces that you'd like to share about the Ziggurat that maybe Mm -hmm. some people who haven't watched Campaign One would like to know about? A little few factoids without giving too much away. Sure, not giving too much away. Yeah, Yeah. the. Ziggurats, you know, and structures like that were built specifically to be places of, of worship and powerful magical energy. There are like unseen ley lines that run across Exandria and places of, of necessary important worship and ritual. They would find these kind of ley line intersections, these nexuses where the power was the strongest. And that's uh, often where a lot of elemental and different planar doors would open. That's what the Ashari look over at different parts of the world. Uh, and places like that, these temples would be built, these ziggurats would be constructed in pre-Calamity era. And the ziggurat beneath Whitestone specifically was one that was built to the Knowing Mistress, the Knowing Mentor, the... Uh, uh, the, oh, well, hey, the God, there it is. Holy sketch. Uh, God of uh, of knowledge and you know sharing and the spreading of knowledge for the betterment of of all life on Alexandria, um, and then the temple as part of a climactic battle in the calamity uh, was buried essentially along with a lot of what was essentially that space and what would eventually become Taldore, and so this was long buried and forgotten, uh, except to the whispered one, and his. Uh, Acolytes that followed his <laughs> path of interest, and so a lot of the the whole the whole basis of the Briarwoods coming to Whitestone had nothing to do with them really caring about the Dorolos or anything. It was all part of them fulfilling the other half of that pact she made with the Whispered One. It was like, yeah, you want your husband? I'll save your husband, but then you got to do this for me. Mm-hmm. And it was essentially sending them over to Whitestone to go ahead and uncover all this as part of this ritual that you saw happen too early. Mm. Mm-hmm. A little too early. Yeah, in, in the original build, there was definitely there was a there was a mention of that part of the interrogation for the kids was we're looking for this secret thing. Right. Well, how 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 much do you crawl around? Like, tell us, show us all the secret parts of the oh. of the castle. We're yeah. looking for a thing, and none of us knew what the. That's why they burned through all the kids one after another is because they were interrogating us to find out if we because you know, kids crawl everywhere, so they assumed those were the ones that might know something. It just took them years to find it all. Yes. Mm. And like, yeah, Whitestone's a big mess of like various strange ley lines and gods and and has a terrible, awful history of murder and and violence. Well, that's the Sun Tree originally was there was after that whole climactic battle in the Calamity in which the Dawn Father was part of that construct to try and protect the then wounded uh, Annoying Mistress, uh, planted the seed of the Sun Tree there as a protective element there in that space and a reminder of the battle that took place. And uh, it was kind of forgotten for a while post calamity and after the divergence. Um, and then when the Dorolo family came uh, to that area, they saw the Sun Tree as like a beacon of, of this is where we should set up our society, this mm-hmm. is where we should build our town, and that's where Whitestone began, was there in the Alabaster Sierras around the Sun Tree. And then fast forward later, and there's a lovely festival where there's some honey that's being sold, and some bears come you know. along. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 weird some weird stuff day. happens, and uh... there's bright times, there's dark times, there's bear times. <laughs> there's bear yeah. times. Spectrum. Bear times. Yeah, you know, you know. A uh, question for Gray and Matt, as you two are sitting next to each other. We've talked about this before in other watch parties, but the vocals behind Delilah's necromancy spells are phenomenal. Um, what was the process like in how all those spells were written and recorded? How did you capture the sound of necromancy so well? And also, what was being said backwards? <laughs> I crave to know. <laughs> well, I mean, whenever it came to any sort of like necromantic spell stuff, because uh, Sam and Travis are the ones that helm the majority and the weight of the creative vision of this project. If they don't get enough love, please give them the love, because they, yeah. we're all working on various projects, but this animated series is genuinely the, the labor of love that these two gentlemen here have been kind of forwarding for the years as they go on. And all of us are part of that collaboration, but it's definitively something they've put together. So, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
that being said, when we get to when we uh, get to stuff like like spell casting words and place names and people people names and stuff, we always Let's turn it over to Matt. Yeah. Matt, I, uh, I think you provided us uh, like a bunch of text that you you wrote somehow. Um, and then we, we took it and just uh, figured out if it needed to be longer, we would just add add a few words. And when we did, we usually would just put in a word backwards to just kind of make it, <laughs> just fill it out a little bit. So, so it's a mix, actually. The final spell casting is stuff that Matt wrote, words that Matt said in the campaign, like Entropis and Tharamphala, Thara that kind of stuff. And then also there's a few extra words that are just stuck in there just to kind of, because we needed like, oh, we need two more seconds of stuff. <laughs> and then we would hand it to Gray, who just Dude. just slayed it. I mean, Obviously. like, you made it your own. And we, I think when we recorded, we even said like, if you need more time in this beat, you know, you can repeat a word, you can move words around, just, you know, just make, make it, Make it your own, and, and you did. <laughs> I grew up in a Pentecostal household, like Assemblies <laughs> of God, so oh, we no. would like speak in tongues all the time. Right, so that right. really came in handy with us. And I, it, <laughs> right. it's weird though; it's like the just complete opposite side of the coin, you know? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, then, like you know. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I was used to, uh, you know, speaking in other <laughs> made-up languages. I get it. Oh, I love <laughs> it. If we could yeah. brag on Gray for a second, there would you be can. there would or be takes. She would she would always get more and more intense with each take. And we were like, we'd be thir three or four takes in, and then, you know, we'd be like, yeah, that was it. That was that was that was excellent. And she'd go, can I, can I do one more? <laughs> but it, it was in that sweet, but also like slightly off way. And we were like, just let her go, let her go, just let her go, let her go. <laughs> It was a long lockdown, folks. I was I had a lot of yep. steam to blow up. It's been really cathartic. To yes. just start speaking in tongues and yes. bringing up the dead. You know, we like only three ever... kids by yourself at home yes. for two years. We're You're like, just like, I want to speak in tongues right now. <laughs> we only ever recorded Gray at her house. She was never in a studio, and we never did it in person. Like it was always oh, it was in your first garage, time I've seen right? You guys in two years. Yeah, this is the first time I've seen you in forever. I know, I know. Oh, I'm so glad to see you guys. I'm so glad to be away from my children for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bye, yeah. I'm yeah. going out. Oh. <laughs> oh. <Flip that. laughs> oh man. Um well Sam, we yeah. didn't get to hear a lot of Scanlan talking. Uh he was unfortunately silenced, Thank so we didn't really get to hear yeah. what he said to Pike while he was silenced. What do you think he was saying? Oh, oh, probably just like <laughs> Uh, I respect you. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. You're uh, you're a strong, independent woman. Uh -huh. and I uh, really am supportive of whatever you want to do. And if it's not now is not the right time, that's uh -huh, cool. Uh -huh. That's cool. A lot of you gas know, queens. Yeah, a yeah. lot of gas yeah. queens. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. I mean, I actually am saying something. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think. Wow. I, Travis, would I you like to I think I recorded all of that stuff like like this, but I was saying real words. Oh, yeah. And there's some nasty stuff in there. <laughs> and then so it's, it's this, but then also they turned it way down and muffled Muffle. it more in post, so you can't really here. It was so awful and also excellent at the same time that there was definitely a debate between whether we make it more clear and easier to understand because it's just so fucked. It's nothing, it's nothing awful, but it was definitely a little of that Kenny from South Park thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And then that little bit at the end when he's strumming and singing and then you can finally hear what he says. That, t that had a couple different versions too of, of like the last few words of that, of whatever he was saying at the end. And uh, you have a small part. snippet. Uh, oh, I mean, it was just whatever the worst words you can think of. Because ah. <laughs> he was so frustrated that he couldn't be heard, so he was just start. It was a string of curse words, gotcha. basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, gotcha. And then we uh, and then we we played it back, and we were like, "Well, it's kind of taking us out of the, <laughs> the mood here to hear." <laughs> <laughs> so let's just make it a, a, you know, the last couple words don't have to be the worst cursing you've ever heard. Yeah, that's fair. All right. That's, that's fair. fair. Yeah. Uh, for everybody, we got to see a lot of Vox Machina flex a little bit. Um, what is everyone's favorite moment from that awesome fight on the ziggurat? Oh. Start with Matt. I mean, hopefully the cameras were on me, but like I, I teared up here. I tear up every time, and I have watched it multiple times, but I tear up every time that uh, the music kicks in and Keyleth, like after grabbing oh, the, the roots, the light starts, you know, pulling into her and there's like the pass around the ziggurat, you hear the da 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 da, the drums kicking in and ugh. Yeah, the, the whole like build up to, to Keyleth harnessing the sun tree, I just, I get emotional every time. It's so, it's so great. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Yeah. 
Talent. I mean, that, I will actually say that that is that is one of my favorites too. I will I just just because I, I need to vary my answer because otherwise, what's the point? Uh, <laughs> other than going, uh, 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 Pike's Pike being the the one woman Avenger and just like like skating on the shield and then like yeah. throwing it and then like doing the, the like lightning and uh, just that whole fight with Silas is so much fun. Yeah. I like the silencing. Oh yeah. yeah. So Such, a, <laughs> power. Such a power move. Yes, yes. Yeah, a lot of people are like, yeah, Delilah, shush Scanlan. I want to <laughs> fight. Thank you. I nope. that out in it's life, the, just. It's like one of the meanest spells too. It's such a just. Yes. Yeah. Stop Immediately it. take your power. Cut your mic. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what is the magic user supposed to do? Punch? I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really. A desperate. Uh, I liked when Grog was just unconscious for most of the fight. Cause <laughs> That's great. It was le made, made less for the animators what, to animate. What you didn't see was that he had little lip flaps and he was going, Sun Tree, help me. <laughs> 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 and Sun Tree was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine the Sun Tree actually like, looked over and was like, <laughs> fuck that. Yeah, and went yeah. over to kill it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I loved uh, I loved the twins uh, fight scenes just so you get the dichotomy oh. between the big magic users and then just the martial hand to hand. Plus the board team just killed it. I mean, actually yeah. getting like the knee blocks, the hand, all the hand sparring. We're using the she, bow to like yeah, tie the hand oh, up. Yeah. Uh, so cool. The roundhouse kick from Vex into Vax, and oh. I mean. I mean, look, Laura and Liam are excellent, we know that, but their fighting reactions are so good. Yeah. You can just he hear the heel hit his face and spin, and oh, it's just so good. Yeah. For all the fighting stuff, we are uh, we're very fortunate on, on this show. Like, a lot of times in animated series, you, uh, you record your main session, and then at the end of one of these sessions, you do, like, a Walla library of just like, give me a bunch of hits. <laughs> give me a bunch of getting hit. <laughs> and they kind of use that to build the the vocals of the animated series. And it's pretty good. It's pretty good. But in our series, because we're really anal about it, <laughs> um, we, we do that. And then we sort of have a build of a fight sequence with those like library sounds in. Mm -hmm. But then when, when it's done and locked, then we go back again and get the actors to actually just oh. chase through the whole fight scene in real time mm. after it's animated so that the that all the sounds can really match up perfectly and be exactly what you're seeing on on screen and stuff and so it's much more nuanced every every fight scene in every episode is all unique to that episode and we never repeat a single fight sound in any of them so that's really cool yeah, yeah. it's cool it's a great reminder i have some adr to do tonight yes you wow. do yeah. <laughs> We this yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that's actually really. Yeah. Oh, I learned something new tonight. <laughs> it's really fun chasing it's fights. I love, it. I love chasing fight. Uh, Talison, <laughs> you have often. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. You've lost them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you've often talked about the long history you have for Whitestone. So, what are some of the Easter eggs that have made it in that we've seen so far? Do not spoil anything. Oh God, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think of things that we have seen so the so far. Song? Hmm? The tanning salon. There is a tanning salon. It's lovely. Uh, that's actually where, where <laughs> the eyebrows are. No yeah. 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 It's Percy goes to a tanning salon. <laughs> it's it's like you, you should see how pale Percy is if he doesn't. Like this is not. Yeah. Oh my gosh, he's translucent. Yes, it's literally very easy to animate. I'm actually amazed that they let him. Uh, just a coat walking by. Yeah. It's just a coat. Um, God, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. Like we have, we, we just start to go into the, into the, into the cemetery, uh, and like we, and we just skate around the outer edge of the. Uh, uh, of the of the eastern wall, which is a whole, has its own, own whole terrible history. They also, I mean, there are things that you don't even necessarily see in the animated series, but I know they put in there because I kept staring at maps, going, "No, right there." Um, <laughs> the poison garden is back there, but I, yeah, I think we only see it in like one. Um, one overall. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole garden garden of uh, various poison plants and flowers and such that the uh, Dorolas kept in the back of the castle. I don't yeah. No, I knew. That. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say, Lady von Musel from about 80 years ago, uh, who was an arranged marriage, marriage, planted it and started using it to slowly poison her husband so that she could take over the city. Oh. Good for her. Good for her. <laughs> yes, and that's no. like gatekeep girl boss. It's, uh, no, <laughs> let's go. It's, it's, it's actually how the third house of Whitestone happened. It was a whole thing with her cousin. And uh, be her. Right? Yeah. And Keyleth, Keyleth, Keyleth has helped keep it up, actually. Actually, which has been really nice, is that it's still a poison garden because that's how they make the terrible arrows for uh, for for vaxes. Oh my oh. god! I overthink this I, shit. I, 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 I think you think just about the right amount. <laughs> oh yeah. 
So yeah, that that I think you can see from from just one, but like, oh god. That was part of the fun of like, I, I had an expectation going into this, when we first started going into the series of like, well, you know, we'll go to our team and they'll probably have to change a lot of like, scenarios to fit for the world and stuff and we'll truncate it. And then we met the art team and they were all, for the most part, critters. And they just took the maps and stuff that we had designed for the world initially and just implemented them and made them better. And that, that's been one of the weirdest things about seeing Whitestone come to life is realized from an over, overview, it is essentially pretty much the same layout as it was in the original oh. campaign and the books and everything. And then, just, and then just brought to even more vibrant life. It's and like the beautiful star crest they put on everything and like yeah. the way that they, like there's there's the complex crest and then there's the simplified crest, which is so beautiful and I love, love it, it so much. <laughs> everything. So good. It is beautiful. Someone should <gasps> sky ride it. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Matt, speaking of yes. overthinking things, uh, to what extent was Cassandra bewitched in the original campaign versus just being manipulated over the course of a few years by the Briarwoods? It's a, it's a combination of the two. You know, I. Cassandra's definitely. Her, her journey was meant to be a story of, uh, you know, psychological manipulation, mm -hmm. Stockholm syndrome, mm -hmm. and. Really, another testament to the to the Depri the Briarwoods' selfishness and depravity, like in, in in utilizing her as a a chess piece to maintain control over Whitestone and keep the populace at, under control as much as possible, and some of them even under the belief that things will be okay because there is still a Darolo there. And so, for me, I think initially it was likely more about control, and then over time, through gaslighting, through manipulation, through you know. Giving and taking away through hurting and then and then comforting, you know, a lot of just terrible manipulation methods, convincing her to believe that this is a better life than the one she had before, and that the Briarwoods were truly her family. And it wasn't until Percy began to show up, and there was that kind of glimmer of the past there, that maybe the the control, the kind of the magical control elements began to come back in as a safety kind of a you know a special additional blanket. But a lot of it still was the damage that they had laid in her over time. And her overcoming that was a lot of her kind of proving herself as a possible leader in the in the future, and in some ways, you know, a little stronger than her brother. Oh, <laughs> oh I mean, yeah, I, and I love the I love the way, and, and I'm glad I got to do this too. That you, that like the magic is there, but it's just part of the better metaphor for like her her trauma versus his trauma. And she's way healthier. She's way healthier. She's than Percy way healthier than Percy. Percy is is not a healthy boy. That's saying a lot. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're both damaged people. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're both, both real damaged. People, but, but she's meant she's to also, therapy. she's also meant <laughs> she's to, yeah. Therapy, yeah. She's also meant to be an example of, of the fact that a person is not defined by their trauma. Mm. That, that it is there, it is present, and you can acknowledge it, but you take steps to work past it and can find strength in the fact that you've overcome that and become a person to show others that there is a better path through that light after the trauma you've endured. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where her leadership in Whitestone comes into play, in, in my mind, mm -hmm. uh, uh, is is she she's basically now showing, look what I've been through, and I can thrive and grow past this, and with me, we can rebuild the city, and we can make it something better. We all acknowledge we've undergone some terrible things, but there is, there is a better life beyond this if we all work together. And that's kind of the journey I wanted for her uh, after all the Briarwood stuff went down, so. I, I really, and I know we're about to get into it, but I really, even even with how she ends up finishing everything, it's just such a better journey than his. And even, I mean, even with the satisfaction that she gets in the end and kind of where she lands, uh, I love that she does actually get to kind of begin getting away from her trauma versus, you know, Percy, who's now just defining himself as, I am not my trauma anymore, which is just more trauma. More trauma. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a whole thing. Percy, <laughs> go to therapy. He, once this is over, <laughs> once the dragons have been dealt with, we'll, yeah. Percy, go to therapy. <laughs> once the cyclops is here. <laughs> well, we are mm. about to uh, wait. I'm a, so wrong. We have one more question. Oh, Ooh. I'm sorry. We have a surprise question. Surprise! No. Oh, I forgot about good. it. I hate surprises. Mm. That's so mean. exciting. <laughs> you got to pre-read it. Hmm. So, mm. this couch. We have Silas, We're we have Delilah. This isn't for us, it's just no. we can go change. You, you guys can leave, actually, if you wanna. <laughs> no, no, not on stream. Oh. Zip it back up. <laughs> Thank you. No person. Zip it. <laughs> Silas and <Delilah laughs> Percy. They all can deliver some pretty soul-crushing one-liners. But, who among them do you think does it best? Oh, oh, that's right, I remember this. 
Oh. Oh, I, st I step away from this argument. I think I, si Silas is definitely a, a support yeah. to his woman, so. To his woman. I had a really bad bully in, in, in high school that, that said the worst thing ever to me. I said, how come you don't like me? And she's like, oh, you're wrong. I don't care about you enough not to like you. That is Oh my god. Across time. Uh, that, that traveled through time. Maybe. Across time. Wow. <laughs> She ended up kind of going viral though, because she was in this Sizzler commercial where she was like, mm, 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 like making this face, and she became like a meme, and everybody laughed at her for the rest. Of, for oh, the I, love that. So I love that. I love that for you. I love that for you. Sometimes the, the that's nice. Oh, oh, it was like a Sizzler like industrial commercial. Anyway, I really hope everybody goes and finds that and gifts it and sends it to everybody yeah, she's tonight. Goes, mm. Phenomenal. Yeah. Please don't harass this. Uh, no, 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 very, so yeah, I don't know. I, I draw I drew a little bit of a Delilah from that. Now that's that cool, it. calm, and collected. I don't have to do anything. I that's just very that's accurate. Cold. I love it. I mean, clearly Percy is is the is one of the bitchiest characters I've ever created. <laughs> it's just yeah, but yeah, by far the I, I oh. feel like Percy is the one liner is the one liner. Character. My favorite line of Percy's is "Your secret is safe with my indifference." I was so I mean <laughs> so good, fucking ridiculous. I'm so glad that you can respect how bored I was listening to you talk that I had to could sit there yes. and come up with that line. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I was in the middle of my droning on. That's yeah. the line that you, that you said <laughs> in an improv setting. Oh, Travis is role playing. Okay, let's just wait for this. <laughs> Okay, I know what I'm gonna say now, so let's just think about a shopping trip. Okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like I know I that you. you guys have made your cases here, but we could actually have a one line, like a like a line off. A line off right a bitch, now, a like a bitch off? fest. Oh my god. Like a so can we do we have like some teacups? That we can <laughs> give everybody. Oh, oh, this is a. Oh, this yeah, is yeah, yeah. No, this is a thing that's happening. This is a no, this is a thing. Uh, uh, so everybody has their teacups. Really has tea. Yeah, we. Is it, we, is it, is it real tea? No. Maybe. Uh, do it we is. have some, some dramatic music that, that we can cue? Yeah. Can we? Can, can what, I do that? What is, is that rude? Right can you snap? snap? Oh, it's actual tea. Is it? Yeah. Cool. Um, so, let's start off with Silas. Start with me. Oh goodness. We're doing a line off? Mm -hmm. Okay, who's the judge? I'm the judge. Great, yep, great, great, great. <laughs> okay. Percival de Rolo, sweet young boy. It's a shame you lacked the strength to fight a better hair color than the substance your father made you with. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. God, I even have a, a I mean, I'll hold my retort for that, carry on. <laughs> Percival, I. I know you love your hair blue, but I prefer you covered in red. Ooh. Wow! Come on! Uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> All right. Life needs things to live. Oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> oh, Silas. I think you mean the hair color you think you have. Delilah's been so gentle not telling you what it actually looks like. My God. <laughs> wow. Check a mirror, why don't you? Oh, that's right, you can't. <laughs> oh. That was a two part. Oh, I shouldn't have laughed so hard mm. at that. No, that's fair. All right. Well, this has been uh, yeah, successfully yeah. bitchy. <laughs> like, wait, oh, wait, oh, we're I not done. One more. Oh, 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 all right. Jesus. Please, okay. the floor I got is yours. one more. And Delilah. It's just worth pointing out that you became obsessed with a 400 year old disgusting corpse with a blindfold and it still ghosted you. My oh. God. <laughs> That's what I got. Damn. I heard, Damn. You're the, I heard you're the life of the party, but only at family gatherings. Oh! oh. Sorry, oh. Talison, you oh, almost no, won. <laughs> and Greg came oh, in no. with the killer. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> why did that go on the show? <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Bow now down they know to I was we we yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Silas is the hype man. Silas yeah. oh, yeah. is like, that's my woman. Yeah. 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 That was very impressive. That was, very impressive. <laughs> that was so good. Oh, it's good tea. It was it good tea. Yeah. Yep. You guys ready for the final episode? Yeah, yeah, we're so good. Yeah, okay, okay. Without further ado, Take us, the us. final episode of The Legend of Vox Machina, and probably the last time you're ever going to see me because they're never going to hire me no. again after this. Oh, <laughs> the what? darkness. Within. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. All right. Yeah. yeah. Count down. Do we count? Count down. Can we count? Three, 
two, two seven, one, one, three. Play. <laughs> Hey, look at that. What? We did it. 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 And now we can sleep forever. It's great. Just kidding. There's a season two. Ha ha. Sleep. 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 I haven't slept. Immortal one. Yeah. Sleep is sleep is not a thing that happens. No. No. I've got to go back to my family. No, we still have more questions. Oh, right. Okay, good. We still have questions. Yeah. Oh, man. There's your name. I saw your name. Boom. Saw a lot of questions in chat about. I'm not that I'm looking at chat. No, uh, no. About when season two is going to drop, we don't know. You we heard really it here first, we, we folks. Would, really we would no tell fucking you. idea. We don't know. We don't know. Sorry. If we, if we torture you. We'd like. We'd say we like. We know, but we're not telling we you because yeah. we'd enjoy. It's that. not done. Yeah, yeah. but like know. legitimately, yeah. no idea. Working on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Will you tell us when you know? Nope. Nope. No. <laughs> So how do we know that you're not lying right now? Oh no, boy. Yeah. Right. And, no, we're not. But do you know? That we're not lying? No, that do you know? Oh, I know I'm not lying. But do you know what day it comes out? No. Oh. No. But he's lying. No. Is he lying? He's lying. <laughs> like zone of truth. You know. <laughs> do you know? <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's ask some questions that you could actually answer then. Okay. <laughs> for Talison and uh, for Matt, guns are typically not a weapon one sees in fantasy settings, and that fact is baked into how Percy's firearms are presented in the world as novel but dangerous inventions. So talk to us about the narrative gravity that Perch's, Percy's invention has and why they're such a big deal. Oh, boy. Um... So, like all of my irritating uh, characters for D and D, I was like, I was having a, a bad year and processing some trauma and some stuff around death, like you do. I had a, a kind of shitty, honestly, especially compared to what actually got made, pretty shitty uh, script where I was that I'd written a couple years previously about what what would inspire someone to actually create the very first gun and like how weird and twisted that was and sort of what would what would lead to that, like how would if you were smart enough to figure that out, you were probably also smart enough to know that was a terrible idea mm. in kind of the Oppenheimer. Uh, and then as we were putting it together, um, I also was listening to uh, Black Rider, the like Tom Waits version of Defreischutz, the of the and about a guy who sells his soul to the devil for magic bullets that never miss, except there's one that gets to go where the devil wants to, but he doesn't know which one it is. So he slowly just starts using too many of them until he just sucks. Uh, Good, good show, Black Rider, if you're ever in the mood. <laughs> uh, and with all of that and like, you know, layers of uh, dealing with trauma and other things, uh, I was also, we were hopping into a game and I'm like, this is a thing I've never done before. Do you mind if I get weird? And uh, <laughs> uh, Matt usually lets me get weird. Yeah, I I'd never considered incorporating firearms into like a, a fantasy role-playing game setting. Um, but there, were, we were playing Pathfinder at the time, and there was a actual gunslinger like mechanic, you know, class you could play. And he brought up this concept, and I was like, "This is the one concept I would be interesting in looking into." Kind of the responsibilities and the the unique kind of challenges and butterfly effect of somebody mm. who's it's just one who, who grappling with with this creation. And uh, I was like, "Yeah, we'll see where it goes. Give me a backstory, and I'll, I'll see if I can play with it." And uh, and oh boy, <laughs> that, this, so, worked, worked out interestingly. <laughs> I'd say it worked out beautifully. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty yeah. happy. Yeah. Viscerally, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Gray, in this episode, we see a different side of Delilah, and it's no mercy Percy, my favorite kind of Percy, is laying down his gory plans of vengeance for her. So what do you think is going through her head in that moment as he's deliciously detailing how he's going to tear her to pieces? I think once she lost her love, it doesn't, I think she's just like accepted her fate and she just doesn't, it's almost like kill me and put me out of my misery. I'm so, you know, I'm just, I don't think she was even plotting to try to stay alive, but I don't know, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I just think she's such a beaten woman at that point, so. You're right. Mm. It was very frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even get to hurt me. No, I th I think I that's what the myself. I think that was, I think that's what the speech was about. Was like I need something. Give me anything. Yes. Wake up. Wake up. Yes. Ah! Yes. Hope. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, eh, my husband's dead. Who cares? I know. I know. It's also, there's that's so much effort 
that she put in to bringing him back for it just to be wasted. Mm -hmm. yeah. That must also suck. But I love that she had to be really get one in right even before the end because she was like, somebody kill me right now because I'm in such pain, so I'm just going to say the meanest stuff I can come up with yeah. so I can just be yeah. out of here yeah. as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice strategy. So we finally discover what the fuck is wrong with Percy other than severe trauma. Um, and the final battle of the season ends up between Percy and his demon versus the rest of Vox Machina. So to everyone, walk us through how you guys chose to pace this reveal and why Percy's inner demons end up being the penultimate threat. I turn to Sam. Oh, I mean, uh, uh, well, in the campaign, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Matthew, uh, it was, uh, us battling Orthax was more of a traditional battle. Like he he manifested in, in corporeal-ish form. Yeah. And, or they, uh, and we, we battled Orthax uh, until hit points were at zero, basically. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a, a, <laughs> a textbook RPG battle. Yeah. The psychological elements kind of leading up to it, but then once it was there, it was like, Hey, you guys have characters. Do damage and win. Of course, because that's <laughs> how the game works. But it, this is animation, so we get to do we get to delve into so much more cool uh, mind mind fucky stuff. Um, and that's the technical that's term. Yeah. 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 Mind fucky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you can have a story in the action elements as well. It's we just came off of an episode where everyone is engaged in high Physical. action. Yeah, it's all visceral, and that's great. But we also don't want to see just you know the good guys going after the bad. We want to see like we want to twist it. We want to make one of the good guys part of the bad guy, and you have to mm. figure out how do you take down the one thing without hurting the other. And so that sort of that sort of uh, interest was important. To and us. also, the whole season was about Percy's torment and about revenge. And 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 you know, we asked a, a question about revenge, uh, and when we had to give it an answer, right? And so. Um, and the, the, the real way to do that is by examining like what's going through Percy's mind, and the only way to do that is by going inside Percy's yep. mind. It was really an ode to Taliesin. Thank you. <laughs> and, all the, yeah, and all of my damage as well, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there was so much talk about how to pace out that story and how to move it and make sure that like we never gave too much and we never got to it any place too quickly. And, and yeah. It, it was very difficult, and I'm very impressed by how well you, you guys managed to. It was tricky too because a lot of the season could have been avoided if Percy was just like, "Let me tell you guys what's actually going on." <laughs> <laughs> but he, but he, he didn't. didn't. Know, yeah, that was know, a big yeah. thing. Is yeah. he's he's in massive like yeah he was he would go somewhere else when this happened and, would, and yeah he was deeply repressed. Yeah. And Speaking well, of going and, somewhere else, oh. we saw some cool art there of. Uh, Orthax kind of Orthax. on Percy's face there. Um, and the design that we saw of Percy enmeshed with Orthax wasn't the first design. There was actually an alternate look that was thrown out, and it's uh, pretty cool if we want to take a look at that. Yeah, this is the, the manifestation of Orthax when he starts to become more corporeal and actually taking over for the plague mask, which is what you see earlier. Which is really cool. Movies. Yeah, and we were, yeah. we were debating eye shape and stuff in, in some of these drawings, but then we also, we, we sent Phil on an God, that's Whoa. cool. Exploration yeah. of like what, uh -huh. what, what, what Percy might look like, you know, when, when Orthax has completely taken him over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just kind of let him off the chain and we were like, what do you got? And he sent these and we were like, yeah. These oh, are creepy. these are <laughs> really, really fucking cool. They're is that a gun hand? Yeah, it's yes, it's it is a gun hand. I, mean, like, like, I really appreciate yeah, this. Yeah, they're really yeah. fucking like like this is this is like the uh, the play arts alternate you it's know so figure arts. of it's Percy so Orthax. It's so play arts. Yeah, um, but it was like it's a little not bit cool what we're going it, for, it, but it's fucking awesome. It looks like a Final Fantasy like. Yeah. Final boss character, yeah. like it definitely, yeah. it absolutely. You have to hit what, each one of those eyes before you start taking yeah. it down. That was kind of the funny thing. We were in the Mighty Nine campaign, still playing at the time, and we saw the design. We were like, you know, the funny thing is, the Look campaign we're in now, this is actually pretty appropriate yeah. for yeah. with yeah. all I'm those saying, eyes. Do you guys have like a it? thing for red eyes everywhere? Seems like. to be at that time. <laughs> Minus eyes. Minus eyes. Oh. Minus eyes. Minus eyes. <laughs> so, uh, the cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about that? What the fuck's going on? You mean just those innocent winged creatures on, oh, oh, on you mean the migrational doves? pattern? Yeah, the doves yeah, just yeah. flying north I mean, for the, the winter. The, the seasons <laughs> were changing. They released them Mika? and they just you know, yeah, made like the party so yeah. festive. Yeah, yeah so, well, I mean, if the dragons are flying over to Amon, like, well, what, what are they doing? Are they coming over for like a festival? Are they coming to see the sights? What's uh, what's what's up with those dragons? <laughs> There's only one way to find out. <laughs> I'm sure it's I'm sure it's totally innocent. They seem fine. They seem lovely. Also, the keen-eyed viewers might recognize. Uh, 
a certain encounter from the first two episodes of this season. Oh. And oh. perhaps the ramifications of those actions now coming to bear fruit at the end of the season. Yeah. Hmm. Just Bare like in the home fruit. game. Yeah. That's exactly right. like in the home game. Does it have something to do with dragons? It might. It mm -hmm. might? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It could huh. be a bit of a leap, but it feels like it might. I feel like it might have a lip. A little bit. Just a titty bit. It's we'll see. All right. Smitchy. Well, we shall see. that's a season two thing, which you guys don't know when that is happening. Nope. No. But you'll hear it first here on the Critical Role Twitch channel. <laughs> <laughs> I hope nice I come back because I've done a lot of shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was very responsible. Do you mind if we answer some questions from the chat? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, by all means. Uh, some people were wondering, what is one moment from the campaign that you were not able to include in these episodes, but you wish you could? Boy, oh boy. Oh, well, I mean, like, man. things can get flipped all the way around, so it's just because it isn't here now doesn't mean it won't be there it's later. True. It's true. And we found ways of giving nods, like whether it was the rock and the cows and the banner and the keep, mm -hmm. or, you know, the door scene between, you know, uh, Percy, Vax, and Scanlan not being at the church, but actually being at the, the prison. Like, we tried to connect and pay homage to all those, all those little things. I'm trying to think if there was a scene that we, I mean, we talked about a little today, like, I, I really wish we could have gotten a bit more uh, Briarwood backstory in there, just because yeah. that stuff's so juicy to me. Um, but you know, we ran out of time and yeah. stuff. But uh, yeah, no, I think I think most of the the key moments from this arc, anyway, mm -hmm. uh, we managed to sneak in there in some mm -hmm. way or another. I don't think there's anything that I regret missing. Out. And there's you know there's a tree. I yeah, mean, so true. Right. <laughs> and there's timeline stuff that we always are, are we're always messing with, either because it's more interesting or because it'll connect well to something that's coming up, and and so things get moved and shifted constantly. It's something that we really want to do to make sure that it stays fresh, like you said. Yeah. So just because you didn't see it in this season, where maybe it was was supposed to be, doesn't mean it won't come back in some form or other in mm. future seasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get to play with the timeline in this format. Which yeah, it's fun. Good to keep people on their toes. Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, what is one scene in this season that was your favorite to record for everybody here? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, our mm -hmm. favorite to record? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shoot. Mm -hmm. The blood gurgles for me at the end. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those were some good blood, blood gurgles. gurgles. I like a good death Hell gurgle. Yeah. yeah. I, I really love the very first. Uh, Orthax, Orthax mask, uh, and I mean, like, so much of that was so much fun because it's just that is my oh, bread and butter. Episode three. Episode three, when like I finally got to like do the voice and like, like move move from the angry to the awesome and just like start to like gravel and like. Yeah. Oh, is this is everything I ever wanted? It's the one line that you you the way like it's like yeah. oh <laughs> shit's getting real. I loved yelling at y'all with the with sure. the, and you let them get away. It was like such a perfect moment of of like that. I was I loved every moment of recording. <laughs> I enjoyed recording uh, my music. Uh, the vocals for the music was fun because I did it at home alone and usually like at midnight <laughs> when, <laughs> when my kids had gone to sleep and stuff, I would be like, all right, this is my time. The house is quiet. I can go in there and I can sing and not, not no one will come in and interrupt me. Oh. And, or, I love or, my mother, or, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dad. Daddy's doing the thing again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Travis, did you have a favorite moment? Boy, I was trying to think. I, I know that uh, it was kind of interesting for the second episode when Grog has that big uh, I would like to rage moment. Mm. We recorded episode two and we did it very much like we do in the game, just a very like, I would like to rage, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And we came back and recorded episode three and Mary Elizabeth was like, is that all you got? <laughs> and I was like, oh shit. And she was like, do it again. So we came back in at the end of the episode and just like took a big breath and just went for like the biggest one possible. She was like, got it. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Yeah. Mary Elizabeth just always took us to that next level from, you know, we know our character so well, but mm -hmm. she, she just was she a, an amazing, amazing um, conductor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have to say, she is one of the best directors I've ever worked with. Really? Because yeah. you start to get a little fat and happy doing this, you know, just yeah. like, that's good, you know? I mean, and then she always <laughs> like, because she's such a good actress, she'll be like, what about, and you're like, oh yeah, I need to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right. I need to like wake up, Bella, and just start putting a little more of, uh, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Kick you out of your chair. Yeah, yeah, just like, it. oh, okay, yeah, of course. 
I remember also, and I'll just I'll just brag on the twins again. I, I remember uh, when one of the first episodes we went and you know got margaritas after we had recorded, and we got to sit down with uh, Laura and Liam, and just just hearing the twins really sink into like the heart yes. of those two characters. There were also times where like other people's performances, whether it was Talison dropping really low or the screams, or hearing the twins connect in that way, that everybody just kind of looked around and went like, okay, we're playing this kind of ball now, mm -hmm. and everybody's game just kind of <laughs> rose to that moment, and it happened multiple multiple times, but. Laura and Liam always just sort of level set for us, and we just sink in. It's true. Yeah. They don't get enough uh, uh, applause uh, uh, on, on watch-alongs like these, but because they're so solid and consistently solid, they're like the acting heart of yeah. the show. Yeah. They're, they're the both good so kids good. The family. Nobody yeah. pays attention because yeah. they're like, well, of course, they're the good kids. Yeah, they're, they're so <laughs> good. Hey, everybody watching, go tweet at both of them yeah. and tell them Yo. they're amazing. Yo. Yo. Love them too. We love you. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's coming. Matt, did you have a favorite moment to record? You Sorry, did so but your weapons have to be checked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, I think I don't know. I, I for me, honestly, some of the aside from like the Orthax stuff with you, mm. which got to like kind of kind of dig into my my best kind of like Mark Hamill pocket of like eating the scenery. Um, <laughs> I think for other than that, I, I think it was the the subtle kind of couple stuff with Delilah, like in the earlier episodes, mm. especially where it's like. You know, uh, you know. Don't worry, dear. It was nothing. Yeah. All, just... all kind of like the like. This is our daily life. We just go and we make breakfast. We kill a few people. We yeah. work along. And like like at the dinner party with the two of them, just kind of like talking with the part. It's like just this kind of like comfortable confidence when they're both arm in arm amongst other people. This kind of like undertone of cocky. I know what they don't know. Very and impervious to yeah. anything else. It was yeah. just fucking delicious. I love those scenes. And I liked it when they got those robbers. That was like, well, you know, they were assholes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you gotta hit them with a the tree. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish that we had more questions, but that's it. Oh, we did it, Critters. We did it. We did it. We did, we did, it. did, it. We did it, Critters. And we we really did it, Critters. Like together, you <laughs> made this happen. You showed your amazing support for this from the very beginning, and you. I hope you're as proud as we are because you made this happen. Yeah. This is incredible. You did this. You. you this did is this your critters. fault. <laughs> also, I feel like we say this every watch party, but I want to say it again to every animator and and yeah. artist and writer and everybody who had a hand coordinator. in this project, coordinator, designer. Designer, sound designer, sound designer, lighting, everything in between, this is all for you. Like, holy shit, y'all did the damn thing. And mm -hmm. if you know an animator out there, you know a writer out there, go get them a glass of water and <laughs> ask if they're okay. Water. And, and, and tuck <laughs> them into water. bed and <laughs> make sure that they're, you know, hydrated and, and okay because they do a lot of hard work, and I could never even imagine what it's like to be this incredible of a team. So you guys put together a hell of a team. And also, again, to Sam and to Travis, who yeah. have the show on their backs. Did it, dude. So with all of these accolades, Let's send the season one off with a bang, with shall a bang. we? Literally, what, with what, a bang. What, what, all right, you ready, you ready? This down? All right, on, on after one. Wait, what? I'm gonna say three, two, one, oh, okay. and then after one, <laughs> one, and then one, and then, and then we're gonna do it. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Oh, oh Jesus! Yeah. Oh, 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 oh my God! Fuck! God. That's <laughs> super loud. Oh, 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 Don't play it, you're oh, 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 Thank you so much for joining us. Good night.